Hello ladies and gents, this video is a walkthrough of the APA style guide uh, worksheet that you've completed. I just want to give you some detailed information here so that you can compare your work to this overview to make sure that you've got all the right answers. I will of course note in your worksheet where errors happen, uh, but it's nice to be able to elaborate a little bit more fully because APA style is complex and full of nuances. Uh, so I feel like a video like this does a much better job of giving you the information you need to be successful in the future than just a few short comments on a worksheet. So this video is designed to help you remember these concepts and apply them later on in your work in this course. So if we take a look at our worksheet, we have recognizing plagiarism. It's divided into a couple different parts. This is the first part worth 25 points. Uh, we see some student work and then you are asked to define the error and provide a correction. Uh, so in our first one, the error is that the student didn't put quotation marks around directly quoted material. They took stuff word for word from the first uh, sample and put it in their own work without properly attributing it. This would be plagiarism. It would cause a deduction in your writing, uh, could, if repeated, cause a zero on the assignment, and if blatant, would have to be reported to the Dean of Students. So we don't want to plagiarize. We want to make sure we're doing a good job citing our materials. So the correction would be to have our stem where we introduce the author, put that text in quotation marks, and then include the page number at the end of that quotation. Original excerpt two, the student did faulty paraphrasing. So they got the wrong idea from the source material and wrote something attributing it to the author, but the thing that they wrote is not what the author said or has anything to do with any of the ideas the author articulated. So they misinterpreted the original text. So in order to fix that, we would need to correctly interpret the original text. In student work three, uh, the paraphrase could be more clearly framed, and we do need to put the page number at the end of both sentences. That's the really big thing in this sentence example here. The page number comes at the end of the summarized or paraphrased material. This cues the reader to say, this is the end of somebody else's ideas. Everything that comes after will be my own original work. So we want to make sure that we put that page number at the end of the summarized material to give that signal to our reader. And you'll see that corrected here. The page number has been moved to the end of that second sentence. In the quotation section, this is worth 25 points. The first thing you're asked to do is create a quotation with a stem in appropriate APA format. So according to Leiden 2004, we've got our quote and then we end that quote with the page number. This is correct in APA format. Sentence number two is what normally trips students up. Sentence number two is asking for a very short, quote, fragment embedded in a much larger sentence. So the rule of thumb for this kind of quotation mark is about 75% of the sentence should be your own words and 25% should be quoted material. And we have a great example of that here. We have our lead in stem where we've got our own ideas being articulated, a very short quotation, just a few words, placed in conjunction with our words, correctly put in quotation marks, and correctly cited with the page number. All of this is done in correct APA format. Then we have our paraphrasing section. Paraphrasing is different than summary because a paraphrase is about the same length as the original text. A summary will be much shorter than the original text. We're still taking the original words and putting them into our own words. That's something summary and paraphrase have in common. Where they differ, is just that length element. So we have an example right here from Michael McCovey on page 16 about paternalistic organizations. You'll see those same ideas reimagined here. And because we have more than one sentence of paraphrase, we do indeed include a page number at the end of that information. The summary, as we previously noted, should be much longer, or uh, the summary should be much shorter. <laughs> The summary should be much shorter than the original. The original is much longer than the summary. So we've got four sentences of original material here and then just a very brief summary down here at the bottom. This is a one sentence summary, so it doesn't need a page number at the end. We have our correct signal phrase lead in with the author's last name and the year of publication. And then the idea is broken down into our own understanding and our own language ended with a period, but once again, because it's only one sentence long, it doesn't need the page number. And that is the entirety of the document. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any specific questions about your worksheet, please reach out. I'm here to help.